Welcome back. Let's try to do some tactics. It's been a while. Um, uh, but yeah, these uh, a lot of these tactic puzzles are really challenging. So um, let's just do our best. Uh, maybe one thing I could do, even if uh, I struggle with the tactics somewhat, is at least explain my rationale. So, if there is a Maximin's chest that goes, look for captures and checks. So here I have a capture, I have a capture, I have a check, that's not a check, I have a check, and I have a check. These are, at first glance, my candidate moves. Um, now, there are various ways to look at this sort of thing. Uh, one algorithm you could use, or one heuristic you could use, is if one of the moves obviously wins, play it. Um, so here I've looked at all four possibilities. None of them seem to be an obvious win. Um, so possibility number two. Um, see if you can prune any moves so you don't have to consider them any further. So, starting from the beginning here, uh, one of the moves I want to look at was King Takes Pawn, which can be met by Bishop Takes Knight. So we don't need to look at King Takes Pawn any further. That endgame is lost. Alright, so uh, next thing is this check is met by this king move. And it's pretty clear that, like, from this position after the king moves um i do have one capture that would lose my knight but otherwise i have to move my knight and black can choose to defend this pawn or otherwise cause some mayhem so uh we can rule out this knight check similarly this check uh, is met by this king move um and black is again threatening to exchange their bishop for this knight and either draw or win the endgame. So we have by process of elimination ruled out this and this and this. Therefore, since there's only one capture or check remaining, it must be this move. We don't need to look any further to see whether or not this is the right move. This is the right move. We've uh, looked at other uh, moves. Yes. <laughs> Um, you know, it's just as valid as the other title that another person happens to be using because there is a hard rating cap limit of 3,999.9999999999, etc. It is, there's literally no way in the rating code to achieve a rating of 4,000, so doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so I like my title. Um... So, candidate moves. Obviously, black is threatening to promote here. Um, here's a candidate to guard the promotion, the promotion square. This candidate would immediately fail to king takes knight. Okay, so we can rule out this king move. Um, remaining possibilities for how we stop the pawn are um, either knight here, guarding the promotion square, um, or knight takes the pawn directly. Um, so I don't really have a rule of thumb for this one. I kind of wish I did. Um, obviously black is threatening to exchange this for our pawn. So we got to have a good move here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Identify all the candidate moves. So this is a check. This is a check. Um, I think both of these knight moves are countered by pawn e5, followed by pawn takes pawn, and there's just nothing to be done anymore. Um, this check, again, is countered by the king attacking the knight. Um, and then the knight's hanging as well as this promotion check being threatened. So this check is out. 
simply taking the pawn as I discussed results in this pawn exchange or our pawn takes and the king takes and that's just over. So the only move to prevent this threat um, while still giving us the possibility to chase down the pawn later is this check. And that's the end of the puzzle. So yeah, let's try another puzzle. Oh, incidentally, I'm not even looking at my rating because I don't care. <laughs> um, so, look at captures and checks. This is a check, this is a check. There are no other captures or checks in this position. Identify the opponent's threat. Um, does the opponent have other threats? I mean, maybe this. I don't really know. Um, so... Let's see. Okay, so candidate moves are this check and this check. I don't really see any quiet move that would set up some devastating tactics, so we're going to have to be not subtle here. Um, potentially this, targeting this and then trying to promote, could be a threat. Um, I mean... It fails to a very quick analysis of Rick takes this pawn and we exchange some pawns and there's just nothing here, but it's a candidate move. Um, so uh, I guess I'll add um, Black's threat does look pretty serious here, this Rook takes pawn, after which White has no winning chances. Um, because black can take the other edge pawn and then come back and take the f pawn. So we have to stop this rook takes pawn thing. Rook e5, uh, king, I don't know, probably goes to d4. And then they take this pawn and so forth. Uh, so there's just nothing there. So we've exhausted captures and checks except for this check. So this must be correct. Okay, look at captures and checks. There's a check. There's a capture. Technically, this is a decision, although we know that this is devastating. We know we must stop it. Now, um, we have, I mean, at this point, um, this is kind of the fork in the road where we can say it's extremely likely rook c7 will fail. So we have a choice here. Do we look at rook c7 and prove that rook c7 fails, which could take all day, or without moving the pieces, do we look at rook takes rook? So looking is free. Actually moving the rook to take the rook is not free. Because it's possible rook c7 could be the solution. And I'm thinking, well, proving that rook c7 loses or draws is going to be very difficult. Because there's lots of possibilities where this king could go. And lots of possible follow-up moves. Even though I don't think it's going to lead anywhere, it's possible it could lead somewhere. So, um, in a blitz game, I might just take the rook. But since we're solving puzzles... Let's, without moving the pieces, figure this out, right? All right, let's take a look. So say we've exchanged the rooks, and their king is here, our king is here. We play king f7, they play king here, king e3, king takes pawn, king f3, king takes f5. We are two pawns to the good, and winning the race to promote our pawn first. Um, king takes g3. Sorry, that should be red arrow. Um, now the king is attacking the f4 square. Uh, so we can play... I'm a little confused whether it's going to be king e5 or king e4, but one of these two moves, probably. Um, no, probably king e5 to avoid stepping on a square that's aligned with h1 promotion square. So our king protects this. Their next move would be king takes pawn. And we are four moves away from promoting. Uh, at this point, they would be five plus a king move away from promoting. 
Therefore, uh, yeah, the script exchange does win the game. <laughs> oh, oh, I, uh, oh dear. I made an assumption. Almost always you want to move your king in these king and pawn endgames. Almost always it's far too slow to start moving the pawns. I, I could not even conceive that like anything other than this king move could possibly be correct. And this puzzle punished me. No, so black here is threatening this, and black here is, oh, I'm sorry, they're threatening one, two, three. They're also threatening this. They're also threatening this. I kind of have to take this threat seriously. Um, so h4 does meet the g5 threat, um, but I think their king is slightly faster here. I mean, we could, at this point we failed the puzzle, there's no harm in trying it. Um, so my opinion, well, of course, we're not going to get to see the end of this, but, um, I thought this was too close. I guess it's not too close. Uh, we're five moves away. Black is six moves away. That's the difference. So, yeah, that's really close. Um... But yeah, h4 was necessary to prevent g5, and I just forgot the g5 that I had suggested earlier is actually a serious threat there. Um, so, let's uh, try another puzzle. I do tend to upvote the problems that I fail, and I do tend to downvote the problems that I succeed at. Uh, kind of says something about their instructive value. Um, but maybe we'll start getting really strong puzzles all the time. So, captures and checks. This is a capture, this is a capture, this is a capture. This is a capture and a check. Therefore, it must be the best move, right? Um, so, those are our candidate moves. Those are all our captures and checks. This loses the rook, this loses the rook. Rook takes pawn, loses the rook. This has to be the right move. All right, captures and checks. This is a capture, this is a capture, this is a capture. Um, that's, these are all of our candidate moves. Um, so I did, obviously rook takes c5, I'm just joking. You, it is a candidate, but it's easily refuted. It's still easily refuted. Maybe there is some universe where it ends up being the correct move, but not here. Um, Pawn takes has an interesting threat of trying to promote the pawn. Rook takes, I did look at this first, because uh, I was allured by the possibility of rook g8, I don't know, rook a8, rook a7, rook c7 checkmate. Um, but that is way too many moves. Our opponent's not going to give us all that free time. And if I try to take a shortcut and not go through a7 first, this is what I had also looked at. Rook c8 check. They could play king b7. And there's no way I could bait them back into going back to c6 so I could play rook c7 mate. So that's not going to be a mate. It will collect, however, uh, the d pawn here. So if I do rook takes, they take this pawn. I'm oh, sorry. So now, instead of just giving myself all these free moves, we have to look at a variation. Rook takes, rook takes pawn, rook g8, threatening this, and this would win the d-pawn. Uh, rook takes h4, draw. Uh, I mean, it could be worse than a draw, too. But, um, yeah, this is not trending in the right direction here. So... Um, I'm sorry, there's another combination here we have to look at. Rook takes, rook takes pawn, sacrifice the rook here. This doesn't actually make a threat, but if they were to take it, pushing the d-pawn could promote the pawn, but then they could play rook h8. 
uh, and then sacrifice their rook for this promoted pawn. They probably have better, but they could do that. So sacrificing the rook is still out. Um, a third possibility uh, arises with rook e5, threatening rook takes pawn here. Again, the problem is rook takes h5, rook h8, rook takes d8, etc. So, like, there's no promotion threat there. Therefore, I I'm still of the opinion that this rook uh, attack is much too slow. We need this pawn to promote. So it has... Uh, well, I'm mistaken. Both of these candidates are incorrect. My rook e5 is also incorrect. I looked at all the captures and checks. Uh, advanced players need to look at more than just captures and checks. This is neither a capture nor a check, but it is the solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is correct. And the motivation is that we want to prevent Black's rooks from combining on either the fourth rank or on the H file. Um, so we need to do this in-between move, and then we'll do pawn takes pawn or rook takes or something. But yeah. Uh, yeah, H takes is super alluring. Um, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't work. It, to me, it looked like there would be a fierce uphill battle, but since our other threats are already covered. Like, there's no way for us to force this D pawn to promote. Even if we sacrifice our rook, the pawn still does not get a chance to promote. Then this has to be the correct way to lead the combination, as opposed to waiting to a later time to play this king move. Uh, it's tricky. But I'm at least explaining my reasoning, and my reasoning is showing why I'm failing the problems, because I'm not looking deeply enough and I'm just doing it kind of whimsically um, that's unfortunate so captures and checks I guess partially like I've done so many puzzles on this site that I'm just accustomed to always the answer is a capture or a check and apparently the new puzzles aren't like that the old puzzles you could almost with certainty say it's going to be a capture or a check every single time. But I guess the new puzzles are better. Um, so yeah, here... Uh, like, why not take the rook? That rook looks very tempting. Uh, I guess an answer to why not would be if, is if we had better than simply taking it. Let's do an evaluation here. If I take the rook, and if black takes the bishop, um, black has a queen, we have a rook and a bishop, and a pawn, and like some chances of trying to win this thing. Um, that said, like the chances that are offered here in that endgame look kind of equal to me. Because a queen versus bishop, rook, and pawn, like, that's nine versus nine that we're talking about here, even after pawn takes. So exchanging off one of our better attacking pieces is maybe not the right way to go here. Um, so we did a brief evaluation of this. I was not completely convinced. So we're going to start looking at pawn takes pawn. Um, against pawn takes pawn... Uh, black, in theory, could block an f5. Blocking an f5 just loses whatever piece they block with, so they can't do that. But that is one possibility. But um, the other possibilities here are this, 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 and this. So if king g7, uh, we play rook f7 here. And oh, I'm sorry, we don't even have to necessarily play rook f7. But this king is, like, super awkward in the corner. Potentially could get chased out to h6, and then we could play rook h7 and then pick up the queen. Um, that's one mode of thought. 
That's not to say that that's exactly what would happen here. So if we give this check, instead of moving toward the queen, they would have to move to the back rank uh, and be prone to checkmate threats from both rooks. Um, so that's interesting. If king g7, uh, they might as well just go directly to g8 instead. But there, there's, the king is still prone to whatever kind of mating attack we decide to conjure. Um, if the king goes to the left, to e8 or e7, suddenly we have threats both to promote the pawn and perhaps to play some kind of rook attacking the king and skewering to win the rook in the corner. Like rook f7, um, followed by rook df1, and then rook f8. Something like that could occur. Not saying that will occur, but we're just speculating what might happen. So this looks very tempting, especially because bishop takes rook doesn't seem to go anywhere. So I'm going to play this again on a whim. In a tournament game, I'd actually give this some effort. And this is not the correct move. You're supposed to actually take the rook, and hell if I know why this is best. I evaluated that this was even. Um, it's not even. I mean, that's... My intuition led me the wrong way, and uh, that's the end of that. I mean, there's nothing more to learn from this, other than I just didn't evaluate it right. Now you could say, let's go analyze the entire endgame and figure out how our evaluation failed. Um, so I think this is an instructive moment, but... I don't think this puzzle's particularly good at teaching a concept unless somehow it were explained like why white is winning this and you could just toggle on the engine ask the engine give me a move give me a move give me a move and you could do this exercise for the next 5 10 or however many minutes um and usually I'd recommend that um but here I just don't have the patience right now for it so we're just going to move on and see how we do. So, um, capture, capture, capture. There are no checks here. I have no mating threats, although if a queen just teleported to e8, that would be a mate. So if we could find a way to get this queen over to e8, that would be wonderful. Um, it's unlikely here. The queen could make it to g7, that would also suffice. That might be doable. Um, well, I'm sorry, this queen covers d4, so it's not like we could just vacate the d4 square and then use it. But if we vacated the d5 square, our queen could check and start getting more checks and something might happen. Um, hmm. Okay, so candidate moves have been identified. If this rook takes the pawn, we're going to look at, like, I mean, you're, the damage you're looking at there is knight takes f2, or queen takes f2, and white is just super hosed. The rook takes pawn must lose, so let's take that out. Um, if we're considering rook e1 takes e4, um, I mean, there's multiple responses. Probably the most obvious of which is f pawn takes the rook, but also this like rook c1 could be a c well no actually rook c1's out. Rook c1 would give up the rook, so this thing I was super concerned about is not in fact a concern. Still probably pawn takes here, and there's probably nothing to follow unless somehow this rook can make it to the back rank and force the king to expose itself, but. Um, that's not super clear. Hmm. I mean, I'm super... I am very tempted by this queen takes pawn idea. Or rook takes and this pawn takes and then the queen just has open access to the king. That is really tempting, but I don't see this queen check leading anywhere. Well, I'm sorry. Now if the queen ends up here, it can go to g there. 
but then we could potentially see rook here, but then queen e8 lands. Okay, so yeah, this has to be it. This is the only move that allows us to continue with this check, which bears both of these threats. Um, yeah, Black's King is just too exposed to deal with all of this. Alright, next puzzle. Um, our king is in a pickle here. If we promote, promotion is a threat, but black has a checkmate threat. Um, so we have to find a way to get our pawn to promote without getting mated in the process. Candidate moves, get out of our checkmate threat. Um, Note that if we play rook g6, we get a perpetual check happens. Our king and pawns and rook cannot provide shelter for our king. So it's got to be rook e6. That's pretty much... Um, I mean, we could try to figure this out, but I'm doing this for fun, not for prize money or anything. So we're just going to... That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Do we have to lead? No. Which move is it? Wait. <laughs> it's this? Seriously? We're just doing this for fun. Um. Huh. How could this be right? Okay. Well, consult your engine. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Subin. Like. Glad you enjoyed it, too. Yeah. I figure some people get it. Uh, so. What you might not know is that there's a hard rating limit on the site that forbids ratings from getting to that number. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so we got some checks here. I don't know. This wins somehow. I'm actually confused. I'm actually curious. In that other position, I didn't really care. But here, here I'd like to know for some reason. All right, so king h7, rook f7 check, king g8, rook g7, king h8. Oh, right, this a pawn lifts all stalemate opportunities. So we could just go in and threaten mate directly and not worry about stalemating black. Therefore, black needs to do something crazy to try to protect their king. But it won't work. Okay, well, that's pretty advanced. Um, yeah, king h8, and then we stalemate the king. That's, no! Uh, rook g7 is not best here. Interesting. Um, rook h6, king g8, rook g6. So the, the best move is to repeat the position with a series of checks, according to this. That doesn't seem right. Let's just go there directly. Um, all right, so queen g1, uh, king f6, king h6. Wait, what? How is this winning? Um, king f6, queen c1. So obviously queen d4 is not possible here. Um, queen c1, and then we want to repeat the position. Well, that's logical. If at first you don't succeed, skydiving is not for you. Uh, so wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, queen g1 would allow king f7. That's the difference. It's not actually a repetition. And then we got this check. All right. How long does the engine intend to continue repeating moves and asserting that's better? You know, that's just, that's not useful. Yeah, I'm not even sure the solution is valid, but there is no way to report. I mean, you could go to the forum and try to report something, but then you have to actually explain why it's broken. 
and I don't have time for that. So I'm just going to flag the problem and move on. Or I'm going to downvote it. Whatever. There's no way to flag or report the problem yet. So uh, a lot of people go to the forum and explain, you know, this problem, is, this puzzle is like not perfect. And we're like, did you consider this thing? Oh, I didn't consider that. Um, so yeah, it's difficult to actually find broken puzzles. That one might be broken, but there might be a solution. It's just above my head. Um, all right, so captures and checks. That's a capture. That's a capture. That's a check. Um, you know what's not a check is this move, but it threatens to check if the king were to move over here. Like, it's probably going to end up doing pretty soon. Um, but then, like, white can actually start to push some pawns and give their king space to run into the center instead. So, probably not rook g6. But at some point we might see rook g6 become an idea. Um... Oh, captures and checks. There's a check. There's a check. Those give away the queen. We've noted them. We found them. We also found this check, which is not going to happen because that gives away the queen. Uh, this gives away the queen. That's a capture. It gives away the queen. Um, yeah. Huge list of candidate moves to consider here. So that's why this came to mind. It's like I didn't really like any of the capturing or checking moves here. The reason I didn't like Queen G1 is because I had started to analyze it and like couldn't find any way to profit from forcing this queen to move. Uh, it's true I could check again, it's true I could hit this rook, but there's just nothing. Uh, rook G6 is an idea. H5. H5 is an interesting idea. That clears the H file. If I can just get this off the board here. The queen can't act, um, so candidates at this point would be like trying to lift the rook out, which I don't think goes anywhere, or just try to blank, uh, vacate the h file. Um, also possible is f5, trying to trap the king so it doesn't escape into the center of the board. I just think something like pawn h4 will forever stop uh, black's attack. So, this is messy. Hmm. <sighs> what to do? We can't even enable the engine here to ask it for a move. Um, I only mention that because, like, this particular tactic looks pretty rough. Um... I think it's gonna... Hmm, not sure. But both of these pawn moves hold the threat of capturing on g4 here. And then once g4 has been captured upon, or maybe in advance of that, this queen check could occur. Hmm. I'm trying to find some tactic that results in a winning endgame. Um... But if we exchange pawns and then give this queen g1, we're going to see king f3. And if we do this check first, we're going to see queen g2, and then there's no time to trade pawns here. So none of that seems fast enough. It's an interesting concept, but I can't imagine it working. Or rather, I can't imagine the pawn trade forcing anything. So another threat... Yeah, that's like h5 has got to be the move. Because none of these other moves make any sense. That's not the move. It's not f5, it's not rook g6, it's not queen g1. Um, What in the world could this be? How could there be a move here? Is it rookie eight? Okay, it's rookie eight. 
That's tricky. Nicely done. Man, these... I did this... I started this live stream... Um... With a, under some pretense that, like, somehow puzzles were easy. Uh, they're not. Wow. I'm surprised how far along puzzles have come. Uh... Okay. Not even gonna try to explain my thought process anymore. Because clearly it's not helping me. And since it's not helping me, it's doubtful it's helping you either. Um, sure, we'd love to promote here. Um, the dilemma we run into is that with our king exposed here, bishop c4 uh, is going to land and collect this pawn at some point. That's our dilemma at the moment. Um, I think we have to play rook c1. And the idea is we're going to try to win this knight. Uh, rook c1, pawn c6. <sighs> but then we take the c6 pawn and then go back to c1. I think that's how you do it. And if they take the rook, then we just promote. It's such a mess. I'd like to play rook c3, but that just loses the rook, so... Rook c1 seems to be the tempo-gaining move here. Uh... What in the world is going on? Sorry, I should not have tried that twice. I'm just stunned that there even is a move here. Um, that's the move. This allows rook c3 check. That's a really complicated problem. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the thought process is interesting. I'm just starting to get flustered. Let's undo Zen mode. We see that my puzzle rating is 2,346 minus 5. So this is why I'm getting over 2,000 rated puzzles to play against, and they are extremely difficult. Um, now note that 2,000 is half of 4,000, so our chances of making 4,000 are about the same as the chances of us making 3,000, but we'll try. Um, oh, okay, well here we absolutely must take the rook. There's, like, no other candidate move there, because the rook taking here on f2, or a rook moving away, would result in a lost position. Generally, in this sort of position, it's important to bring the king into the game as quickly as possible. So king b4 is a very strong preference here. It's not necessarily best, but the idea is if we can zigzag this king, we can pick up the b pawn or the f pawn. Um, and since our king doesn't have any other way to advance, then there's no harm in playing this right away. Now our we actually have a choice. Uh, if we were to make any pawn move, they play king b6, and we've lost the opposition. So it has to be king c5, unless we need to lose the opposition for some reason and then need to get it back. So, we know it's not pawn f4. Uh, I say that. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. What might land at some point in this position um, is actually the pawn sacrifice d5. But if we play d5 right now, um, um, 
Hmm. Actually, this might not make any sense. Yeah, none of this makes sense. There's no pawn breakthrough here. Um, I was just trying to think, if we played f3 and f4 first, and got the same position but with this pawn on f4 instead, our threat to play d5 might somehow have more impact. I was at one point considering a pawn f5 threat, um, but pawn f5 results in them just promoting their f-pawn, and we're out of luck. Um, well, that's not true either. So if we were to play pawn f3, pawn f4, king c5, um, then if we were to play pawn f5, if they were to take, um, then we could play pawn d5. And uh, if you look at the square of the pawn, um, hang on, that's not the good square. Let's try that again. If you look at, after we've played pawn d5, they play pawn here to f4. Look at the square of the pawn. This is the square of the pawn. Our king can make it into this box by playing king d4. So our king barely makes it into the box. So we could consider a pawn f5 sacrifice involving playing pawn f3, pawn f4 first, and then king c5, and then the sacrifice. In this position, black's king presumably would be on a5. So we could consider the sacrifice and play pawn d5, they play pawn f4. We play king d4, we stop the pawn. We still have the threat of promoting our pawn, which lures the king away from the c3 pawn. Sorry for lots and lots of arrows. Um, so all this is to say that f3 followed by f4 is a possibility here. Uh, the immediate f4, king b6, puts us in zugzwang, we're over. There's nothing left to look at there. We have to retreat, and uh, if we're lucky, we draw. Um, we're probably lucky there, but still. Uh, it just doesn't go anywhere to lose the uh, opposition. So we're saying you have to be f4 or f3. Since if we play king c5, and this occurs, and now you're saying if we were to chase this pawn here like we really want to do, uh, yeah, black threatens to take this pawn um, pretty rapidly. Uh, how rapidly? Well, I guess we should count it out. One, two, one, two three, four, five, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, oops, uh, that's a count of eight. So our promotion, wait, no, this is one possibility. This is not the correct answer. This is the most primitive analysis. So we have a count of seven, that doesn't change. One, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Um... However, with this king here, once we play king d6, black could play pawn b4. And they have, uh, after we do pawn takes here, um, it just takes them three more moves to promote. So that's a pawn breakthrough. Um, presently, it's approximately 2,300. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you found it. I forget. I have a Discord bot that publishes this information. I never made it. Never made a Twitch integration for that. But now that I think about it, maybe I should make the Discord bot also uh, respond in Twitch chat. That could be interesting. Um, we'll think about it. So yeah, you're right. King d6 here results in a breakthrough, and we're just done. Our ni none of our pawns promote in time. We don't have a pawn breakthrough of our own. If we had a pawn, say if this were to move somehow over to e5, 
then we could consider pawn breakthroughs of our own. But here we don't have a pawn chain. All our pawns are basically isolated. So you're right. It has to be either f3 or f4. And I am saying f4 doesn't work, so it's got to be f3. Now, yeah, we've by process of elimination, we came here. Um, black is very generously giving us the b pawn and the c pawn, so we don't have to analyze anything further. This is probably black's best resistance in the position, but it defeats the entire point of the puzzle. Uh, the point of the puzzle being figuring out all that advanced stuff we were just looking at with this pawn f5, pawn d5, etc. Uh, here you just play king a5, it's all over. And you just take it the king. Like, that's super obvious and silly, and black should... This is re requiring a little bit of alertness on our part. But, like, if you were to find this particular pawn problem in any book, they would mention just parenthetically as a side note if king c6 this just wins um really the main variation is that f5 d5 stuff we were looking at earlier so i don't like this puzzle i'm just gonna downvote it it's not instructive all right so our knight covers g8 um so if we could just get this queen over there that'd be checkmate all right, so our candidate moves are going to be anything that motivates our queen to get over here. Um, that looks pretty obvious. Now, the puzzle we're playing against probably has a high rating. Probably after we play knight g5 or one of these other moves. Um, spoiler, it's not going to be knight d4. Like... Knight d4 runs into rook takes knight, and that just... <sighs> we would be in a sad universe if rook takes knight did not refute knight d4. Um, so I'm almost certain it's knight d2. Knight d2, queen takes rook, knight takes f1, rook takes knight. Huh. Hang on. Yeah, queen takes f1, throws a monkey wrench and things. So I think the reason this is rated 2,300-ish, whatever this problem is rated, but it's probably somewhere around my own rating. It's probably because everyone plays knight d2, and then black sacrifices the queen for two pieces and holds a draw. Knight g5 has to be correct, because there are just too many mate threats and no way to deal with them all. I mean, even the queen sack doesn't really stop the mate attack at that point. Uh, does it? Queen takes, queen takes, rook takes here, queen f3, threatening queen h5. Um, hmm. Is there a third possibility here that I'm just not looking at I want to get my queen toward that king so I can checkmate I'm just not seeing a trick here this is interesting I thought this would be super obvious I thought wrong. Huh. Intuitively, knight g5 just screams to be played. But I can't find a tactic to justify it. Um, because queen takes f1 is such a strong reply. Queen f3, yeah? No, I saw queen f3. Then they have pawn g6. Then we have queen f6 winning the rook. That's the key here. Yeah, so that... 
we would have sat here for like 5, 10, 15 minutes. Eventually we'd spot after g6, queen f6. In a tournament game, you got to figure this stuff out. Playing for an audience here, trying to have some fun. Yeah, I will occasionally take some assistance here. It's okay. There's no puzzle leaderboard or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, we are... Oh, okay. But now queen h5. And that's that. Yeah, that was a cool puzzle. That's tricky. All right, so here we're threatening knight g3 and rook take rook h6 mate. Um, uh, which doesn't actually work because this bishop can interpose on h4. But thematically, rook h6 is the idea. It's just this instance of this idea. Well, bishop interposes, and then we do queen takes pawn, and we're still... We have lots of pressure right next to black's king, but that's not the same thing as checkmate. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, rook takes f6 looks... F okay, I'm sorry, list candidate moves. Candidate move, candidate move, candidate, candidate. Um... I did briefly look... Oh, wrong square. I did briefly look at this. Um, I think these are our candidates. So in tournament play, sometimes you'll spend a half hour looking at a position and then realize, oh shit, there was a candidate move I missed. And that can radically change your assessment of what's going on. Try not to like get phased like that. Try to list the moves first and then look at them. Nobody's perfect here, but um, listing the moves tends to help. So yeah, rook takes f6 seems... Uh, I want to say it works, but it just doesn't. Rook takes results in rook takes uh, uh, rook. And I just don't have a hard counter to that move. Well, that was awkward. Um, one of my devices just powered off here. Hopefully everything's okay. I don't know what that's about. Uh, but yeah. Rook takes f6 does not seem to get the job done because of rook takes rook. And our, we have too many pieces hanging simultaneously. Yeah. <laughs> Sack the knight. Knight takes rook checkmate. Okay, well, let's suffice it to say this queen takes rook looks like nonsense. And I think is met by queen takes queen. Queen takes g3 is also nonsense. So these are really our candidates here. Sacrificing the knight on f2 gets absolutely nowhere. Um, so, yeah, we have just two candidates remaining. Um, knight takes pawn. So the problem, though, is after a rook check, they have this inner position, um, bishop h4. And the bishop will be protected by a pawn on g3. Yeah, so these are our candidates. 
And one of these has to be right, or I'm just looking at this entire problem incorrectly. Um, which is possible and has happened quite a few times before already. Um, but yeah, knight takes pawn seems to be followed by pawn takes knight and queen takes pawn, which seems to set up a threat of rook h6 check, I think. I'm not totally sure. And rook h6 check seems to set up threats of like queen h2 and rook g6 or queen takes g2 somehow skewering or forking white's remaining pieces um oh thank you yeah this is Yeah, bishop h4 is the fly in the ointment here that seems to defeat, or at least challenge, our assumption that it's got to be knight takes pawn. Um, if we were to take the bishop first, then after rook takes rook, I don't see a way to continue the attack there either. Um, this is just really weird. Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, I don't think we have very good chances of making 4,001 rating. So feel free to, like, collaborate if you really want to. Just don't use an engine. Um, I mean, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, sure, why not? Um, I don't really care one way or the other. I've given my thought process. I think that's what matters here. Uh, we're There's no way that we're going to actually make it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, knight takes, followed by queen takes. So yeah, the rook h6 looks like a very strong threat. But I don't actually see what rook h6 accomplishes. But further, like, queen d2 might actually counter rook h6. Further, um, like, uh, what am I thinking about here? Possibly bishop e5 could also counter this threat somehow? I don't know. But there might also be something like rook f3. So there's, like, lots of things white can do here. Um, also note that white is threatening rook e8 check and might start making mating threats of their own. Um, although with our queen on g3, our king is kind of safe. So even if somehow we completely lose control of our back rank, um, that's still fine. Because uh, all our dark squares are covered, and our bishop covers the a8 square. So there's not going to be a mate, unless somehow their queen teleports to b8. Um, yeah, curiosity killed the cat. We're going to find out if knight takes pawn is right. Knight takes pawn is correct. I was thinking it has to be this here. Setting up the threat of rook h6, although I don't really see... Oh, I'm sorry. It's either this or playing this uh, after we check here first. Um, and the point of doing the check first would be to prevent moves like bishop e5. Um, which might not be useful for white here. Or bishop d4 or something like that. Um, yeah, bishop takes g2 also entered my mind. It's definitely a candidate. Yep. 
you know, <laughs> other possibilities have to enter the mind as well. Queen h6 preparing, rook takes g3. It seems super unlikely, but that's another thing to consider. Um, but queen h6 also prepares like rook takes bishop, although that's after they exchange rooks, white's better. So that we rule out. It's still a candidate, but it's very quickly ruled out. Um, if we don't check first, white can sacrifice the queen takes rook. Oh! Oh, that is a draw at best. Yeah, so we have to check first. And then we are going to try to exploit this pin. Now we're in check. And white is threatening mean stuff. Um, so we have to decide, do we create a target on c8 that is easily hacked away at? Or does our king run away? Um... Thus, like, boxing it into the corner where maybe it's actually safe in the corner this time. Um, that's complicated. Now, we need this bishop participating in the attack, so our king's gonna run. Alright, they block this, which is... <laughs> this pin of the g-pawn is very useful for our attack. This is, in fact, a resourceful move. Um, so what now? I mean, the most obvious candidate is, well, we list candidates first and then we start evaluating. Um, so that's a check, that's a check, that's a check. Queen takes is bad, but we are listing it anyway. We're just finding candidates right now. That's a check. That's a check. That's a check. Almost all these candidates are terrible. Um, but we just want to make sure we haven't omitted the key if it happens to be here somewhere. Um. Oh, free rook. Free rook airlines. Never mind. Yeah, all this dissolves quickly, because if they take here, we take here. So, um, yeah, we have a fork, so that rook is completely free. That's a tricky rook interposition, but uh, it just didn't do anything here. Um, yeah, this pawn is protected by our queen, so everything's covered. Was this a good puzzle? Um, it was a very challenging puzzle. Um, Rook e4 might confuse some human opponents. It's not... Yes, I think this was actually a good puzzle. Um, chess problemists, the folks who write the things that go into uh, magazines or books or things like that, would condemn this as like, hey, look, you have this check in the middle of the puzzle, and then you got some other strange moves like rook e4, and you have to take that, and like, they would feel this is kind of icky. The reality is that, okay, it's not a very aesthetic problem in the sense that chess problemists would look at it. There are lots of nuances to consider, but um, yeah, this is actually a good puzzle. Uh, really forces you to calculate things correctly um, and doesn't have a lot of silly moves in it. I mean, rook f8, just throwing in a random check, okay, that could happen in a real game. It sucks when that happens that you have to look at just this extra set of variations with or without this move being played. Um, but yeah, no, this is a good puzzle. We're going to go on to the next one. Alright, so... Jeez. Candidate moves. One, two, three. There's a check. There's a capture. I think these are our captures and checks. 
Um, Alright, queen takes can be removed, because it's just dumb. Um, this bishop check doesn't lead anywhere, that's just dumb. So, uh, these are our primary candidates. If we need additional candidates, we could start considering moves like this or this. But uh, these are all very slow. And white, in fact, has this nasty threat that we have to respond to immediately, uh, either by preventing it or... Um, so this enters the candidate move list just to prevent white's threats. Um, actually, queen takes knight is now back on the list because this rook takes f7 threat is so potent and we need a way to deal with it. I'm not saying queen takes d6 is likely to succeed, but it's a candidate. Um. Hmm. All right, so I think bishop takes bishop is ruled out on account of rook takes f7 and we lose our queen. Yeah, we can take that out. Um. Theoretically, rook a f8 could be considered, but god, why? Something would be very wrong with this puzzle if rook a f8 were the answer. But rook a f8 and rook h f8 look logically equivalent, unless somehow this rook actually plays a role uh, on a8 in this attack that we're about to do. Uh, since problems only have one solution, rook f8 and the other rook f8 should be... Um, they should have the same... I'd expect this rook on a8 is probably not going to participate in whatever our key solution or whatever our key line is here. Um, maybe it is actually needed to support advancing the pawn to a2 and a1 because white's queen covers the a2 square. But I don't know. I don't know, man. It's complicated. I mean, knight takes b3. If a takes b3, pawn a2 actually doesn't lead anywhere. We're still losing. That's so weird. Um... <laughs> pawn f6, that's a candidate. Looks super scary because a pawn takes f6. And then queen takes g7. But maybe somehow we have a way out of it. Like, well, king f7 can't happen because the knight covers f7. But something like that might be possible. Yeah. Um... <laughs> yes, yeah, some knight move and then bishop takes the knight on d6. Definitely looks called for here. And I I don't want to see this rook moving off of the back ranks. I'm tempted to do knight takes on b3 like you suggest here. And then we take this knight. Um, oh, and our bishop covers this. So our attack continues. White's attack is slowed by a single tempo. And by some miracle, this all works out. What's the rating of this problem? 2,422. Yeah. So we're our threats are like A2, A1, and bishop takes bishop, and stuff like that. So... Um, yeah, we have a lot of threats here. And if white tries to do something cheeky, um, I guess, I don't know, we have to protect the pawn, maybe. Um, that defense might take priority over our attack, even though our attack is quite strong. We probably do need to take one tempo to defend the f7 square. That's my guess. 
This puzzle ends too soon. We really need to have an answer for queen f3 or queen f2. And we just don't have an answer. Um, yeah, this puzzle ends too soon. So, yeah, a2 is a huge threat. We do correctly note this. Um, so, I'm confused. What if they play queen f2? What's the deal here? Oh, knight f4? I didn't see knight f4, but now it's saying this, just ignore the fact that our king and queen are in danger. Um, nothing to fear here, but fear itself. What the hell? That's really reassuring. Um, so if they throw this in the way, we just take the rook, sacrifice the queen, Oh, they're... wait. And then we pin the bishop. They take this. This is check. So, like, a zillion moves ago, you all saw that this is check, right? Because if this is not check, this whole solution is just kind of ridiculous. Because f7 and then the knight and then the bishop and everything all drop. And probably our king gets mated before theirs if this is not check. Um, <laughs> yeah, there are other wins. You're right, we don't have to resort to bishop takes rook. Um, I'm being dramatic. We could, instead of taking the rook, we could play knight d4, sacrifice the queen, and <laughs> Stockfish just suddenly changed its evaluation of this one, eh? Uh-huh. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm... No, it said the second best move was not very good here. Um, so on queen there, bishop takes c4 is one possibility. Um, rook hf8 is also playable. This is probably what a human would do. And then, having given white an extra tempo, white's extra tempo apparently is not useful. I would have thought that this could have been kind of dangerous. Um, something like this. And then we... Well, we're not losing our queen because the knight covers that square. But, like... Yeah. It's not clear at the end exactly what's going on. Even though black is much better, it's just not obvious. That problem ended way too soon. Um, all right. How is this not the answer? Or this? Like, in what universe is the answer pawn g4? Okay, list candidate moves. One, two. Alright, candidate moves have been listed. Um, there's no universe where pawn g4 is correct, because we get zigzwanged. And there's no pawn breakthrough. There just is not a pawn breakthrough, as long as white can shuffle their king between d4 and d5, eventually forcing us to give way. There's no pawn breakthrough that way, so it has to be king g4. Like, unless somehow pawn h5, but like that's insanely slow and allows white's king time to go back to defend the pawns. How... Okay, so it's not pawn g4. Oh my god. What in the world? These are candidates. f6 is a really depressing candidate. And encourages white to play h3 or f3. So yeah, like, the only candidate that made any sense to me is king g4. We're playing king g4 because I'm bored. I just want to see what happens. Um, so, I think the path white is going to take 
is um, they're going to go here. I wish I could draw this less clumsily. So this is what they're going to try to do, I think. Because I think white wants to take our g-pawn. Now, given that white wants to take our g-pawn, they're going to leave this f-pawn behind. Since they're going to leave this f-pawn behind, we want to be in a position to promote our f-pawn at the end of this madness, which requires us to remove the f2-pawn. So removing the f2-pawn is of higher priority than removing the h2-pawn. Um... <laughs> you aren't solving puzzles. Leechess is using you to create them. Yeah. Alright, so... Yeah, I do think that... Hmm. That's interesting. So, like... In my mind, I really want to remove this F-pawn. But then I'm forced to chase down this H-pawn, which is not so obvious. Whereas if I try the other move order... Uh, I mean, I'm going to be chasing one pawn first and the other one second, regardless how this turns out. Because if I need to be able to promote... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me first look at... Could this possibly work in a universe where white plays king g7? My king's already on f2. Could I just play f5 and then play f4? Yes. White is not in time to stop me from playing f4 and f3. So this just is the answer. Yeah, so if white goes the challenging route here, um, or at least the way that looks challenging, uh, black just promotes. So, the way that looks less challenging to me is... Wait. <laughs> oh no! Uh, we are lucky. Wait, no. What the fuck? Okay, what? Um... <sighs> what? What is going on here? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, hmm. This is not right. Hmm. Yeah, pushing the pawns is almost always too slow. But this other path also seems not to work. And we can't just take the pawn, we have to push, but then we end up in the trebuchet. So that's not right. Alright, so... What gives? Is it this? Pushing the pawn is almost always too slow. This is the exception to the rule. We're pushing the pawns actually fast enough to make a difference. Um, no, it's not. Okay, so... Wow, this is amazing. Okay, we're going to look at the answer. I have king takes g3. Wait. Okay, after g4, king g5, king takes g4. At the very end, I'm playing the wrong move. That would explain it. I got too excited. Yeah. That's right. Okay, well, details matter. Yes. That was supposed to be the easy line. Um, you all saw King Takes Pawn. I missed it. 
I've been watching another chess player recently who is approaching uh, in the positive direction the rating of 800. Perhaps I've watched a bit too much of that and uh, I'm just finding too much excitement in some of this. Uh, it's re really fun to watch. Uh, Alright, so find the best move. Is this not like the answer? That feels very answery. I mean, obviously, black is intending bishop d5 to stop this. But then we just push the other pawn, too. Um, the alternative would be king takes pawn on b5, bishop d7 check, and then we're forced to play king a5 blocking our pawn and black's pawns just run a little bit faster. It's like pawn a5 has to be the first move, unless there's some check or capture that somehow radically changes this analysis. Um, all right, well, I... What could this be? We're going to try all the moves. We're going to double our pawns to avoid getting an A pawn because this forces the bishop to be sacrificed one move faster. Okay, that's tricky. <laughs> but yeah, white's threatening this now. And black has to sacrifice the bishop not on A8, but on B7. And therefore, when we sacrifice our bishop for one of these pawns, we're going to win the pawn race that results. Uh, yeah. So this doubling of our pawns is actually quite useful here because g2, or b7, is closer to the center for our king than a8 is. So we're able to force black to sacrifice the bishop for the pawn quickly. And then our bishop can take one of these pawns and we win the pawn race. That's the analysis. All right. Um... Hmm. Candidate moves. Rook takes a3 is a legitimate candidate move. And unfortunately it's just not right because black plays king b6 and rook a8. And there's nothing we can do to stop the rook from going to a8. So rook a3, rook takes, pawn f6, king b6, and we lose. So... Rook a3 is out. So pawn f6 looks pretty compelling. Um, that seems to be overwhelmingly winning. And if this rook goes back to b8, then we can check here. King b4. We draw our rook back and then move it to support our pawn. But then black plays with black's king on b4. They could actually play rook d8 and start making this messy for us, but their rook can't actually take anything. The end game's still completely winning. Yes, so... Okay. This tries to change the analysis. Um, interesting. I mean, f7 forces rook b8... Uh, black is also intending pawn c5, trying to exchange some pawns and trying to wedge their king into this corner. So we do have to be cautious about this pawn c5 thing. So candidates are these two moves. I don't think there's a third candidate here. It's not clear where our rook would go if our rook went somewhere else because black's rook is threatening rook b8. And if the rook gets to b8, then we don't have time to play rook to e8 and pawn f7 all at once. We'd have to choose between sacrificing our rook for no good or playing pawn f7. If we play pawn f7, black plays rook f8, and then their king approaches the corner and things get a little complicated. Uh, pawn c5, on the other hand, is a waiting move. 
asking black to tip their hand. This to, are they trying to get their king in the corner, or are they trying to stop our pawn? But on pawn c5, black could play this. And I just don't see any counter... Well, we could play king e3, and then black gets their king into the corner, scaring our rook. Um, our rook goes to e1, threatening rook e8. So if after playing rook b4, black plays rook b8, um, with our rook already on e1, we could play f7, then black would be forced to play rook f8, confining the rook. And our king would be on e3, um, having a tempo to go back to d2 and try to stop black's king from getting into the corner. That's really convoluted and can't possibly be right. So it has to be pawn f7. Um, so again here, black is intending king b3. Uh, although here would just drop the rook. Um, so if we played rook f1, black plays rook f8, and then black manages to promote the a-pawn, and we're not in time to do very much. Um, we have a choice. We could go toward the pawns. We could go toward protecting our pawn, trying to win their rook. Understanding that at the end of this, we'd have to go one, two, three, four, and then try to promote this. And at the end of this combination, black's king would be on a1, and they'd have to go um, one, two, three, and then they're threatening our C pawn. Um, oh, resulting in the same tactic that we just saw in the previous endgame where we play pawn c5, and then instead of walking into the trebuchet, we just take the pawn on c6. Um, yes. So that's to say, um, king e5, exchanging... Exchanging our rook for the a-pawn, and black's rook for the f-pawn could work, depending on how fast each king advances, uh, how fast each pawn advances. So we are one, two, three moves. I'm sorry, after king e5, king e5 is the first of four moves, king e6, king e7, and pawn f8. For black to promote, king b3, king b2, a2, and a1. So we both play four moves. However, white also has to spend a move moving this rook somewhere. Um, so that move wasted on moving the rook. Um ensures that black promotes first and thereby like none of this chasing down black's pawns actually works because black can actually take on c4 before we have an opportunity to take on c7 or c6 so we are down one tempo in this king e5 variation king e5 does not work uh, since king e5 doesn't work our remaining candidates are rook f1 and king c5. Oh, you're right, king c3 is a candidate, which could save us from doing a lot of calculation if it actually works. It definitely looks like it works. Uh, king c3, rook b3, king c2, rook b2, king c1, We've blocked our rook, and then they have rook f2. It's not so simple. Um, right, no, that's the key here. Is like We've ruled out this one super complicated variation. Um, so the question is, why is rook f1, rook f8, king c3 not just winning? It's a fair question. I don't see why it's not just winning. Yeah. So, with these 
puzzles, I tend to take a tact of trying to refute all the alternatives and just accept whatever uh, the remaining move happens to be. But you're right, I don't see any way to refute uh, Rook F1. It looks winning. Um, so I guess in a real game you'd either have to somehow reach a conclusion that this is definitely winning or I think it's winning. Or you just have to reach a conclusion that I'm most comfortable playing this move instead of other moves. Uh, yeah, we have to play Rook F1 first. If we're going to do that, because Rook B3 is tricky. And potentially our king ends up on C1 blocking the rook and then black plays rook F2 and we're just screwed. So we have to start with rook F1 if we're going to do that. As I was noting king C5, I was not very... King C5 looks wrong. It's just morally wrong somehow. Um, I mean... King C5, rook F8 kind of forces rook F1. Because if we try to take on c6, black just takes on f7, and our two pawns cannot break through against pawn and rook. So yeah, king c5 is out. So let's play our remaining candidate. I mean, technically rook e1 could be a candidate, but it's easily refuted by rook f8, and then you have to play rook f1. Any Well, I spoke too soon. Rook e1 is a candidate. If rook f8 actually happens... Uh, white could play rook e7. Uh, white cannot play rook e7 because of pawn a2. So since rook e7 is out because of pawn a2, rook f1 would be forced against rook f8. Ergo, just play the rook to f1, which is not the correct move. This is not correct. This is correct. So, that's the peril, and just asking, well, why is it not rook f1? Well, because it's not. That's why not. That's why I try to refute the alternatives here. Um, so the key here, rook f8. Um, e oh, I forgot. Okay, so yeah, I said we'd have to spend a tempo. Wait, why is rook f8 played, though? What's this with rook? Oh, because they can't push this, and they can't push... Okay, I was thinking too abstractly here. This would just drop the rook if they play king b3. If they play pawn a2, that just drops the pawn. So even though we are forced to waste a move, moving the rook away, black is also forced to waste a move. <sighs> because they can't directly go for the idea they want to go for. So they have to play the rook out of the b-file somehow. Um, my preference would be here, but anyway. Um, I guess if rook there, white potentially has this rook h1 shot. Uh, how's this evaluate? Black is winning. All right. So it's not rook h1 there. Uh, but yeah, potentially there's like rook f1 or rook g1, so yeah, black has to play rook f8 here instead, as uh, I'm a kitty too, is suggesting. Oh, yeah. Or rather, international master a kitty too has suggested. <laughs> uh, let's see, king e6. Yeah, so the key here is in that abstract variation I was counting out that was super complicated. Um, yeah, black is losing temp e2. Uh, if you just completely in abstract think about this, oh yeah, he just plays this, and then we play our king, and then they play this, and then we play our king, and then they play their king, and this is how I was counting it out. This was not concrete enough because you just take the A-pawn when it's hanging. Um, okay, yeah, rook c8. I kind of like that. Um, so if rook c8, you just play this, right? 
Um, and since this threat is so fast, uh, how does this play out? Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe this is not so obvious. Maybe Rook F1 is wrong in this circumstance. But... Man, this is confusing. Alright, let's ask the engine. So, yeah, my Rook F1 move has not thrown the game just yet. C5 was my favorite candidate here, but uh, King E6 seems to get the job done. Um, so, why not King B3? Because now we actually play C5, but we don't need to. Uh, we could s save King C5 for another move. And black just moves the rook somewhere without losing the rook. Um, I guess rook a8. Now we play c5 and are winning this endgame. Because king b2 is too slow. Um, <laughs> rook f2 check. Okay. Rook f2 check, king moves, and then rook f1. Smooth move, stockfish. Really smooth. But yeah, king e7 here. Um, and black's king is, yeah, as we counted out earlier, with c5 here, black is, black's king is one move even further away from a, an endgame that would not have worked anyway. Yeah. Really, really complicated endgame. Whose game did this show up in? It showed up in a game between a 1700 and another 1700. This endgame for which the problems rated 2,479. Um, yeah, somehow I don't think... What, was this a blitz game? No! This is a rapid game. I was just gonna throw this away saying like, hey, okay... Yeah, this is 10 minute rapid. Um, certainly both players could not have possibly worked all of this out in the time that we've struggled with this. Much less the time that they've had in the actual game. But they had something of a chance and their game probably went some really strange direction. That was a really cool puzzle. Oh, interesting. Finally, we've had the common sense to... Um, I see. That makes sense. That's good. Yeah, it was an okay... Actually, it was a good puzzle. It was a very good thinking exercise. Extremely difficult. The only reason I'm not praising this puzzle is because I failed it. I should be intellectually honest here and say, yeah, no, this excellent puzzle... 10 out of 10. Um, I kicked my ass, but what can you do? Alright, here we're playing black. Candidate moves. 1, 2. I mean, it's got to be pawn c4. Taking this pawn puts us in Zugzwang pretty quickly. So yeah, we just need to promote. Alright, we need to stop this promotion, maybe? Um, they promote one move faster. So yeah, we have to stop this promotion. Okay. Now we promote one move faster. <sighs> okay, so here's the square of the pawn. This is how you draw the box that is called the square of the pawn. You see so many arrows. Our king can actually make it into this box. Our king can stop this pawn. Should our king stop the pawn? Probably. 
Because if we promote, and if white promotes, there's just not a win there. Queen g1 does not mate, queen f4 does not mate, other moves just lead to this extremely murky endgame. So yeah, we should stop the pawn. We are in the square. Um, curiously enough, there's not like some study you can go to. I know there's like studies in pawn endgames on Lee Chess. I don't think this concept of the square is explained. Uh, maybe that should be added to the uh, endgame tutorials. Yeah. And note that Black's King is not in the square. So, Black, uh, or rather, White's King cannot make it back in time. So, yep. Good puzzle. Not just because I solved it, but I've seen this one before, I think. Pretty sure it's just Rick takes G2. Why am I... If I have seen this before, why am I remembering it? I don't know. If it's not... If I've not seen this before, it just looks a lot like a problem I have seen before. But our candidate move list consists of captures and checks, right? There is a capture, there is a capture, there is a capture, there is a capture, there is a capture. Alright, let's start ruling some of these out. This is stupid. Um, this is stupid. A knight takes doesn't seem to go anywhere. It does attack this knight. But... Like, winning one pawn doesn't seem like it's enough to solve the problem. Queen takes h3 just loses outright. Hey, look! We've got one candidate move left. Let's play it. Hey, we got it right! Go us! Alright, captures and checks, guys. Oh, we're not even going to bother. It's this one. Alright, now... After having played the incredibly forced and I'm tempted to say obvious, but not really. But like there wasn't an alternative. So we've played these moves for which there just wasn't anything else to look at. Um, we could take on if well, there's a check, uh, capture, there's a check. Both of these are kind of tempting. This is kind of tempting trying to, like, work our way into the corner with the bishop, but I don't think that works. Um, queen g4 seems right, but... Because if I take this knight, queen e2, and suddenly, like, my queen's getting chased around and white can play pawn f3 and get their king out of this corner. So I don't think taking the knight is correct. Um, if I could just, like, teleport this rook uh, to an open file, that'd be awesome. That's not really possible. Um, that said, even if I do this check first and force their king onto an edge file, that doesn't seem useful. So, yeah, both of these are still on the table. So we played the obvious moves, and now <laughs> we have to find a move after having irresponsibly sacrificed a rook. Um, we actually have to try to justify our sack. If queen e2, then queen h3. Oh, because the queen doesn't cover the h3 square. That's an interesting point. And then f3 lands really hard. Alright. Yeah, whereas if we were to just take the knight straight away, uh, then queen e2, and we would not have this queen h3 check. So that's why we have to interpose this move. So yeah, that's exactly correct. This allows f3. And because f3 is allowed... Uh, this is just a free knight. 
Um, so I'm trying to find some way to say like there's moves that follow after this. Uh, we've won a free night. If we count up the pieces, um, we got a rook for a rook, a queen for a queen, a knight for a knight. We're actually down in exchange still. If we're not counting any of the pawns. Uh, all these pawns over here match up, all these pawns here match up. So we actually are bishop and two pawns for a rook. So material count wise, everything's even. King safety wise, black is better. Um, oh, I see. We are still threatening queen h3 and bishop g4 and bishop f3. Uh, so backing up a bit. Wait, what? I confused myself. Yeah, how do we respond to this? Because queen h3 also looks interesting. But I think we just take the knight. Oh, well, the engine wants to repeat moves indefinitely. That's not the right answer. Uh, queen h5 did not enter my mind. But it sets up a mate threat. Um, yeah, the engine's preferred move is repeat the position. The second preferred move is give this check, which actually gives mate or wins heavier material. The third preference is to take the knight. After rook h1, bishop h3, rook... So... Why is rook g1 no good here? Because mate in the move. Okay. And similarly, uh, queen e2 fails for reasons we've looked at, so rook h1 would normally be the remedy here. Um, huh. Oh, that's cool. Wait, but now if we put the bishop on h3, we don't have queen h3 anymore. Um... So this is the trick, and then we pull the queen back, and without this queen h5 move, um, we have to play something like bishop f1. Why is bishop f1 good for black? Why not just take this? Because of mate in 6. Check. Check. Now f3? Um. Okay. And this mates because if this, then there's queen h4 mate. That is tricky. So yeah, we are demonstrably much better on king safety than white's king is. That's crazy. Wow. All right, let's try one more. Uno mas. <sighs> take the queen, take the pawn. That doesn't win. Man. Taking the queen and taking the pawn is super tempting. It just doesn't win here. And if we don't exchange queens, it really doesn't look like we're winning that either. Oh, I see. Take the queen. If a takes rook a1, we pin the rook and then promote the pawn. I've used the same tactic in one of my own games. Um, there's either a pin or a fork. Yeah, I've done this before. This is not my game. How cool would it be to see, like, this was a game played between me and somebody else, but no. This puzzle's... yeah, it's got a decent rating. Um, I guess... 
out of a sample size of 275 attempts. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess if you haven't seen this trick before, it wouldn't occur to you to try it. Yeah, no, I'm aware that you can't, within the Lee Chess platform, check such a thing. I believe that somebody's produced a page on GitHub for this purpose. I believe another person's produced a website that uses the data of that GitHub page. So I think databases are externally being produced. It's just Lee Chess has no interest in making or maintaining them. Oh, Lee Chess added it. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, I misread what you said. Uh, sure, sure, that's fine. I'm off script here. Um, still making the video. Hopefully folks watching the video will be okay with this. <laughs> yeah, it looks interesting. So, if there is such a thing, it's either going to be, like, um, one of the pages on Leechess or accessible through leechess.org slash API or the API server. Um, yeah. The API has a lot of functionality in it that I've not kept up with. I've uh, been kind of overwhelmed uh, trying to keep up with all the things. Okay, it's one of the features available in Leechess. All right, so, and by that you mean just through this web interface somewhere. Uh, it's under your puzzle profile, not sure. Yeah, this is why I didn't want to go guessing around in the dark, but um, let's take a look. Here's our little puzzle dashboard. It shows our performance of 2,408, our less than 50% solve rate, 60 puzzles that I still have yet to replay um, from my games. Oh, that's cool. All right. Can I zoom in on this page? There we go. Hopefully that captures okay. Yeah, there we go. So, can I remember any of these games and how many of these do you think i actually found the right move in the game <laughs> i forget if that's something that determines whether or not the puzzle gets selected um i think in the le upper left one i think the correct move was d3 and i don't i think i missed it um Pretty sure I missed the solution to most of these because I play too much three minute chess and I usually miss things in three minute and then go back after the game. If I think I've missed something, I'll run an engine analysis and the engine will say, Yeah, you missed something. I'm like, Oh, I thought so. So, yeah. I think I, it's usually for the games where I can't see the tactic that I'm doing the analysis. So overwhelmingly it's, hey, I just missed the tactic. It's seldom that, hey, there is this extremely difficult and beautiful combination. I actually spotted it. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, they rank these puzzles by rating. <laughs> I missed a fork here. This puzzle's rated 928. <laughs> All right, well, that was worth knowing. Oh, no. I mean, it shows that two things, really. One, that I'm playing too much in Blitz Chess, and two, that I'm just not focused. Like, oh my gosh, that is so embarrassing. <laughs> Here's the Night Fork I missed. I'm sure I had like five seconds on my clock, or just was completely distracted, but yeah. Um, here I have a mate in two with Rook Takes Pawn. 
at least I can forgive that one, because like Rook takes pawn here also wins. No, it doesn't. I think I did win the end game after taking on a7, but still. Um, yeah, I had mate in two. Yeah, so that's... Wait, wait a second. So you can see this from your own games. So I guess there's no way to... Oh, you could search for another person's username. Oh no. Oh no. Wow. Um... Uh, with all due respect, we're all made fools of in Blitz games. We're scrolling down. Alright. So as he's interfacing with his live stream and chat and all that, um, as he's running a live stream with this audience and reading chat and like whatever else he does on his live stream, occasionally uh, things will crop up, at, which I presume he missed during the game. So if we go here, huh? So this has to be right, yeah. And we just take here, okay. And then we could look at the game. Uh, so we can jump to this game three zero. And see that... Oh, he did actually see this. Alright. Well, that's good that he saw it. I don't know why this game got analyzed. Like, if he actually spotted the tactic during the game, why did somebody analyze the game afterward? Did he miss the night fork in a Blitz game? Like, I'm curious how far up the list you'd have to go to find the first one that he fails by rating order. Um. Oh, all of mine are rapid. You're probably correct that in terms of new puzzle submissions, my new puzzle submissions would be in rapid games. Existing puzzles could be from Blitz games, I think. But you're probably right that newer puzzles are from Rapid. I might have gone Berserk, and I might have been distracted, but um, no, you're probably right that most of the puzzles there are uh, from Rapid games. So you get this one, too. Um, Alright, Eric spotted this one. Well done, Eric. How far up the list do I have to go before I find something that he missed? I guess we'll search for something 1500. Right, so here's a puzzle 1505 at the risk of embarrassing myself. Uh, we just take the queen, right? No, I failed it. All right, but I'm anxious. This is from his blitz game. Um, he correctly spotted this. There's some difference. I still don't know what the difference is. Why well, can't just take the queen? Because I spent like zero seconds looking before just taking this. Uh, okay, yeah, that's the difference. So Eric spotted this in a three minute blitz game. So let's go up and find something rated, I don't know, 1700 or something. 1692. Um, what the hell? It's queen h3, right? No. Um, yeah, queen h3, then queen uh, promote on c8. And we are ahead on material. Yeah. All right, he spotted this, right? Um, oh, <laughs> he did spot queen h3, but okay, so you have to get up to like 17 or 1800, and did he go berserk this game? I don't know, maybe, probably not, but he's running a live stream, so okay, yeah, so you have to get like to a 1700 something rated puzzle before you'll see him, uh, make some error that's not a mouse slip. So, 
Oh yeah, we could check this out for... Uh, yeah, we could do the same experiment for him. Sure. Uh... Uh, we're going to have to go extremely far down in this list to find something that's not 2,000. Um, right? Unless his, all of his opponents are just analyzing the games every game. Right, here's something rated below 2,000. Almost certainly, whatever the circumstances, uh... Our Grandmaster would have found the thing that I am going to spend forever trying to figure out. Is it just Pontix Pawn? It's got to be Pontix Pawn, right? This is from a bullet game. We have a problem that's rated almost 2,000. Okay, I got one correct move, and we take the knight. What transpired in the game? Surely! Um, yeah, our world champion had no problem solving this. Or whatever. I don't know. So, yeah. I don't know how far up the list you have to go to find something that the Grandmaster missed. But, yeah. Yeah, so basically every game is analyzed. But still, like, it's rare for... He's got 500 tactics out of who knows how many games. Like, he's got to have played some crazy, crazy number of games by now, since he does so much bullet. And if all the games are analyzed, and only some small subset of them have puzzles, um, what was my point that I was trying to make? I don't know. The ones which have the puzzles, the puzzles have to be actually really confusing. Or it has to be confusing enough that both players, or one of the two players, missed it, and the other might have seen it. Because in Master games, usually the most critical variations are the ones that don't show up on the board. Um, so, in these games where uh, tactics actually do appear on a Master's board, it's going to be complicated no matter what the rating of the puzzle is. Um, it could just be that both players were not expecting a tactic to suddenly show up, and there it is. Um, but yeah, between Masters, it's pretty unusual. Now, if they're all playing Bullet, I mean, all bets are off. Like, fine. Crazy stuff, even mouse slips happen in Bullet. Um, I have no idea. Our candidate moves, Rook F7... 95. I can't even find another candidate. 95 doesn't seem to do very much. Because, like, black could play pawn f6. Or black could probably attack something somehow. Rook f7 looks way too aggressive. Um, but maybe that's exactly what's called for here. I'm sorry, if 95, like, Rook A, F8 could try to hold things together. I'm just going to sack this and see how it goes. No. Okay, so we can't sack just yet. Um, okay, so that's the answer to this 2,200 rated problem. How did it go in this one-minute bullet game? Uh... So black missed this, or mouse slipped. Who knows? Knight takes, Grandmaster found. And at this point, black is panicking anyway. But 
Um, yeah, had actually Black responded this way, as indicated in the puzzle, uh, I'm sure, yeah, White would have found this. Granted, I don't even know what's going on here, but to have played into this variation in the first place, like Knight takes here, it's tempting. I just don't understand this at all. Um, somehow white is better. This is why the puzzle's rated 2200. Queen takes g6. Rook f8. Huh. Why are we sacrificing the rook in h7 instead of playing rook a h8? Because rook a h8 does not actually defend the rook. Okay. So yeah, this knight on g6 would be immune to capture because there is no way to protect the rook on h7. I'd like to think that even in a bullet game, a grandmaster will see it. Like, this rook on h7 is trapped. And we'll just throw the knight here, saying, Black, you can't take this, you just gave me a free pawn. I'd like to think a grandmaster will spot this every time, in bullet, even in bullet. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of games. So if you're constantly grinding games, yeah, that's interesting. So this is what separates us mere mortals from the masters, is that they, almost without fail, will get the correct solution to these problems. If they're presented with a problem, um, not even prompted, these are things they'll just show up in their games. They are extremely consistent. That is what separates um, us who are maybe good at puzzles from the players who, like, every single game will always find the right answer. Um, and just the more consistent you are, the higher you make it up the ranks. That's just how that goes. Tactics do matter quite a bit. There are other things that do matter, but yeah. Uh, we can see here's areas where I have to improve. So, for example, I have to improve at forks and promotion threats and advanced pawn threats and bishop endgames. We can see these are my weakest spots when I am just doing these puzzles for fun. Apparently, um, I miss a lot of things. Uh, my strengths... Zugzwan! Woo! I've studied things maybe better than other puzzle solvers. Pins! Alright. Yeah, so these are things that maybe I've studied a little bit better than other puzzle solvers. So given the rating level of the puzzle, I'm considered uh, strong for that given rating. It's all relative anyway. Um... But yeah, here's the radar graph showing, yeah, we've learned a thing or two, but there's always more to learn. Um, you can actually look at this by themes. You could filter this. There's quite a few cool things here. I think more recently, where's the thing that I'm looking for? It did get added here, right? Length of puzzle. <laughs> You could solve one move puzzles. You could solve all 118,736 one move puzzles. Um, yeah, these puzzles are available for download at the database link. So if you're going to try to scrape or download them, go to the database page to do that. Don't hack the website, please. Oh yeah, here's the thing I was looking for, origin. So you could look at Master Games, Master versus Master Games, and Super GM Games. So, like, this is awesome that um, you could actually, like, try to play like the Masters. Um, yeah, I think that's 
this is more difficult, obviously, than um, if you were to just pick a sh book off the shelf. And if that book were called something like Tactics Time, which I strongly recommend, or if that book were called um, Rapid Chess Improvement, which I recommend, not as strongly, but it's still a good book. Um, yeah, these Master vs. Master, etc. are going to be strong, uh, much more difficult than Tactics Time or other books. So... <laughs> Almost one-third of the Super GM games are Magnus. What can you say? He's a terrific ambas ambassador for the game. Yeah, that's kind of funny. You know, yeah. Just imagine, like, the Magnus challenge. Can you emulate all of his moves? I don't know, man. Uh, maybe if you solve, if you try enough of these super GM puzzles, it could figure out which playing style you are most like. Do you play more like Magnus, or do you play more like, uh, I don't know, any Grandmaster? Um... Hey, uh, we need to teach an AI to quantify beauty. Good luck with that. Um, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah, people are always excited about AI. It's, uh, a lot of that excitement of AI is quelled when you realize that it's just offloading the work to other people. As uh, Randall Monroe notes... Um, it's rare to find actual true AI. AI tends to be thought of as the thing that we just don't have today. Um, that's the bar. It's a really high bar. So, um, yeah, I don't know. At least that's conventional wisdom, whether people agree with it or not. Um, anywho, yeah, there's a lot of cool categories of puzzles. If you want to try to play like the Masters, it's all right there. Um, this is actually cool that there's uh, puzzles by phase. I really, really, really should start drilling this stuff. If I want to make Master, this is the sort of stuff I should be practicing. Opening, middle game, end game. I would think end games are my strength. I would think... All the rest of this that's not endgame related is probably my weakness. I'll have to give some thought as to whether opening and middle game could be further decomposed like these other uh, endgame things have been. Maybe we could somehow come up with useful tags for opening and middle game that would provide training insights. Um, this, If I really want to make master at chess, this is what I should be drilling as well as just looking at lots of expert games and master games. Um, there's just a lot of work I have to do if I do want to make master, but uh, I could do that, and if I were to do it, this is the sort of stuff I should be drilling. So. <sighs> yeah. I mean, if people have code submission... No, I'm sorry, that's not appropriate here. If people have concepts to discuss, machine learning stuff is super complicated. Um, I'm not sure that a code submission would be appropriate because it's just too complicated. We just might not be interested in maintaining the code. You probably want their buy-in that they're interested in maintaining the code before actually going through all this machine learning endeavor. Even though, like machine learning libraries like tflearn and tensorflow and other things are freely available um i know at some point i had an interest in using weka anyway um yeah libraries are freely available for that sort of purpose not produced by leech us but you could probably find some kind of library that helps achieve your aim but doesn't really meet all of your needs because you need a lot of data and it has to be really high quality uh, high quality well classified uh 
yeah, correctly classified data, etc. Um, anyway, yeah, this uh, this puzzle themes is really cool. And there's so many links on here. Perhaps this could be broken into more than one page. Um, or at least Origin maybe belongs on its own page. I don't know. Anywho, yeah, we, um, I'm not sure uh, for the day as a whole if I've increased or decreased my puzzle rating. Uh, but we unfortunately did not meet our goal of 4,001. So for today, unfortunately, that means there's just not going to be a $0 donation. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. Yeah, uh, thanks to everyone for participating. Hope you all enjoyed this, and hope you all have a good night.